And now we have Rifleman, Ian Gladby. The big gun, by the Queensland are worried they're throwing the big gun in. My name is Ian Glasby. Many years ago I rode a horse called Rifleman. Ian Glasby and Rifleman. He was a great horse. He took me on a wonderful journey in life. And those who seen him never forgot him. And we're very fortunate people to have these horses come into our lives. And they took us on a wonderful journey. There's many good times and many sad times. The Australian stock horse originated from our heritage, our horses, many come from the thoroughbred horses. We used them for our work and we used them for our play. Play for me was, was the sport of camp drafting. Over the years, I've turned up at many drafts. That was my recreation. And uh, it was good to be able to hop on a good horse and uh, put one round the pegs. A good horse is a horse that you use for your work, you shoe him yourself, you ride him yourself, you do your day's work, you turn up at an event and you have some fun. And it's pretty good to be able to come home with that blue ribbon. Everybody wants to know who come first, nobody wants to know who come last. I was a very fortunate person to run across a man called Alan Gilmore from Clifton once owned a mare by the name of Cinder's Melody. She had been awarded two of Australia's most prestigious polo pony awards. He bred her to the outstanding and successful horse and sire in Abbey. She had a colt foal and named him Rifleman. When he was 18 months old, he told me he was going to sell him and if I wanted to buy him, he was mine. I took him and uh, at the same time, I'd run across fellows who talked about the good Abbey horses. Rifleman was a big playful horse with a heap of stretch in him who could bounce across the yard and loved to attack his beast. If a beast got close to him, he'd either grab at it or strike at it. And uh, he would, you know, he wanted to dominate the show and uh, he used to be disappointed if he didn't come out on top. He won his maiden draft at a little place called Tannimrill. Tannimrill, a small town not far from home here, and uh, they used to walk the cattle out of the hills to Tannimrill. We'd all turn up and have a bit of fun chasing one around, and they'd walk the cattle back to the hills. And it was our social day, it was our recreation. And it was, it was pretty good to be able to go there and have your day out, ch chase one around, uh, more so than chase one around at home. Uh, when you went there and chase one around and put it, put it around the pegs and and uh, completed the course or got, um, and your scores added up to be more than anyone else's. It was, yeah, it was a pretty good feeling, yeah. I think he won a maiden, a couple of novices, a progressive, uh, and nine open drafts. He won many cutouts. He was, he was pretty dominant in that, and I can remember riding to run off for cutouts with different fellas, and they sort of said, oh, don't know why we're going over here. In Warwick, the Warwick Gold Cup first come there many years ago. It was for horsemen to come there. The rough riders come to ride the rough stock. The horsemen come up to show their horses off. And the Warwick Gold Cup become a big thing because the horsemen from the north and the horsemen from the south always met at Warwick in, in spring and uh, they show their horses off and that was their life. And many great horsemen, if you read the, the book, The Gold Cup, people who travelled with their horses and went there and it was their, it was their recreation. He didn't waste any time on the trimming Didn't have any thoughts of good luck just came with one reason and purpose 
With Ken Grafton, you had to have a horse who could turn around, get about, and hold a beast. And you, you and that horse and that beast, you had to work together to uh, achieve your course. That trust comes with just riding them. You know, they learn to trust you, and just like you learn to trust them. You get to know them. Some of them, some of them haven't got quirks, but you know most of the good ones have. It hasn't been a good horse that hasn't got a little fault. It all goes back to simple things, you know, like Abby, the cattleman and Ralph were both by Abby. All talk was out of an Abby mare, and it was a mysterious thing, you know. Abby came into the world because a fella tied a black horse and a black mare up out up outside a pub and went inside and it happened. There's a champion born every day and I hope one day one might come your way. In those days breeding horses isn't like it was today, it was all natural service and you know it was, if someone spotted that horse and uh, were interested in breeding a mare to him, uh, another horse was bred to him at Milton Hill from Malang and he bred a horse to Rifeman out of his good mare Gypsy. Uh, they called him Kidman. And uh, Kidman is a nice black horse, not a big horse. And Barry Law put a mare to him and he bred a colt he called 303. He went up around the Mackay area and uh, he, he sired a horse called Radar, a horse Pete Comiskey won an open ACA open horse with, you know. They had plenty of successes along the road. And uh, it was just interesting at that night over in Clarny that, you know, they had those horses there and I looked through the names of horses there by Rifeman. There was a horse there called Crackshot, an old fellow bred. And uh, he uh, gave him to Ian Francis to train. And he was a top horse, this horse, at Chestnut Gildon. And I remember I went to Brian Roo camp draft one day and and this old fella, this fella come riding along on this horse and I said, here you go, and he said, good. And he said, this is that horse by Rifleman. I said, oh yeah. I said, what's he like? He said, there's none better. He went, I followed him over to the cutout yard and this horse, he cut the beast out and he went to work and he just turned, turned around too quick for that old fella, he just rolled off. <laughs> he was a good horse. There were some good horses in him. After Rifeman died, uh, I, I kept a colt and I called him Lawmaker because Alan Gilmore traced the name back. Rifleman, that was a horse that stood in the Greenmount district. It was owned by the Phelps family, the people who brought Polo to the Darling Downs and uh, he was a black stallion apparently and he traced the Rifleman's mother back to to this this horse called Rifleman and that's where he come up with the name Rifleman. When looking back through uh, uh, also on, on uh, Rifleman's mother's side they go back to a horse called Lawmaker and that's why I come up with the horse name Lawmaker. I didn't, I had a number of mares and, and by Rothman and I decided to sell the colt and I got a phone call one day from this fella and his old uncle was Charlie Collins, the fella who blocked the face of the camp for many years at Warwick and uh, he was looking for a colt and Charlie said to get, get a Rothman colt and he rang me up to see if I had one I said I didn't and he come and took him, he come back and bought a couple of fillies I'd, and they had many successes. Um, a little horse called Barrister, you know, he's won Kenning Downs, he's won many drafts. Uh, another mare I sold, Explosion, um, had a lot of success and she's produced uh, camp draft winners too, yeah, for, for the Bright family. Mm. But you know, many mysterious things, I, I, I sold her. I sold horses and, and, and the people and it has been great to see him come back and, and have success with them. Also, the, 
that Rothman's mother breed took the Gilmore boys to the top of polo in Australia. It was, it was a pleasure to go and compete against the best and, uh, and, and ride against the best and we're very, you know, they took us on a wonderful journey in life and uh, we wanted to ride at the top and they took us there. G'day, my name's Skip McIver. This is a brief history of the Australian stock or stallion Kyabra Abbey's cattlemen. Wayne Tucker and cattlemen. The information for this story came from an interview with Wayne Tucker. Cattlemen was bred by Michael and Sue Linton Hitchens of Kyabra, Paddy's River, via Mossvale, New South Wales, and was foaled on the 1st of November 1977. He is line bred to Radiant, being by Abbey, by Radiant, out of Miss Wedgwood, who was by Sovereign, by Goldie, by Radiant. Interestingly, Goldie was a full brother to Cattleman's sire, Abbey. Wayne Tucker of Glenray Lagoon, Northern New South Wales, purchased Cattleman as Lot 6 at the Kyabra production sale on the 10th of December, 1983. According to the catalogue, he was a six-year-old, being used lightly for stub purposes and recently commenced cattle work. Wayne said he had a broken leg at the time and decided to accompany Mick O'Donnell to the sale. He had no intention of buying a horse, but came home with one. Wayne described Cattleman as a little horse to look at, but a big horse to ride. He was a dark bay with a white hind near fetlock as his only marking and stood about 15 one hands. Cattleman had his first start at Kyagal as a seven year old. At his second start, at the slippery ground at Bangalow, Wayne broke his ankle riding another horse. The exchange jockey, Alpha Bryant, then rode Cattleman to win the maiden draft. This started a line of at least 15 different riders, from juveniles to ladies and open drafts, who have all won ribbons on Cattleman. However, it was Karen and Steve McNamara of Tabulum, New South Wales, who campaigned Cattleman for the majority of his wins and places. He went on to win at least one novice and 30 open drafts. A highlight was winning the Golden Gate Open at Walker with Steve and aiding Sally Tucker of Barella Bar near Rockhampton to the 1997 ACA Lady Rider of the Year title. Wayne and Lorna moved to the property Canning Down South in the Warwick District of Queensland as managers and continued to stand cattlemen to the public from there for many years. Wayne hand served the mares all by himself. He said that Cattleman was pretty easy to handle and never knocked his mares about. When Cattleman was 20 or 21, the property was sold, so Cattleman retired to a paddock with some mares at Noel Williams' property at Gerard, New South Wales. When Cattleman was about 22 or 3, Noel rang and informed Wayne they had found Cattleman dead in his stall. Cattleman's most outstanding achievement in the light camp drafts was sixth in the 1991 Gold Cup at Warwick. Young and Ridley Allthorpe and into camp. Hi, I'm Eric Young. I bought Allthorpe when he was 18 months old off uh, uh, Daryl Smith at Corindai. Broke him in. Didn't have to educate him because he had it all in his own head. And he's the greatest horse I ever owned. We got him home and I broke him in and that was, he was right from then on. He was just a good horse and so forth. And it wasn't long, I forget what age he was, but he's only very young and I won a maiden draft on him. And from then on, he just went on camp draft and he won his three novice drafts and he finished up winning 40 open drafts. Plus, I don't know how many juniors because the, I had three sons and they all won kids drafts on him. 
and uh, uh, I don't know how many that they won, and I don't know how many ladies drafts Nola would have won on him. She won ladies drafts on him, and he was just a he was just a great horse, a, a really for a stallion. He, there was nothing better. He was just like a good old, good old uh, cow cocky horse that you'd ride around the paddock on. Anybody could ride him. He was just the greatest natured tempered horse he'd want to ride, you know. He's... And the moment you, the moment you, uh, you rode him into the yard, and say there was eight or ten head of cattle in the yard, you ride amongst them to sort your beast out which one you wanted, he'd just walk along with his head down. And as soon as I sort of moved one to the side a bit, and I might have just plucked him up, give him a touch with a spur or something, and he jumped in behind it, well look out because he was ready, for, he was ready to cut that beast out then. He just done his work then, yeah. But he never, you know, some horses, some horses when you do that sort of thing, when you ride in the yard and get amongst the cattle, they know what's going on, so they get a bit excited and they get on the toe a bit, but not him. He'd just poke along with his head down, you know, until you got that beast in front of him. Well, then he'd, he'd pick himself up and he'd do his job then. Bulldog was uh, by Rivley Ray, and Rivley Ray was, uh, I suppose, he'd be one of the most decorated horses as far as winning championships in Australia. And he was out of a mare that was by Abbey. Well, Abbey, there's still horses with the bloodline of Abbey in them, and they're still talked about. Great cattle horses, you know. He was, Abbey was a great camp drafter, and his bloodline bled, just bred on. I got another son up at Virginia, and his son and his daughter, they both got horses that's either by all talk or else they, they buy an all talk horse or they, they still got all talk bloodline in them. Yeah. Yeah. It's still breeding on. People have got into the bloodline of the camp draft horse. They know uh, these days, these days, uh, Horses don't get worked and ridden like they used to those days to make a good camp drafter out of them. So they breed them with that, what they say is cow in the horse's head. The horse has got cow in his head. So the moment you break him in, they just naturally do it. But it's just back in those older days, see? Yeah. But that's how, as I say, Australia was settled was on the horse's back. <laughs>